this and who are eager to go and proclaim you and your message to the world. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. So as we move through the book of Mark, one of the, if you will, one of, one of the topics we see in Mark chapter 7 is the topic of honoring one's father and mother. And this morning I want to talk about that because as you look through Scripture, it comes up over and over and over again. And regardless of your age, this is a lesson we need to hear, this is a lesson we need to teach, and this is a, a lesson we need to practice. It was important to Christ, it was important to the apostles, and it was important to God all throughout Scripture, and so it must be important to us. Mark chapter 7, if you'll look there with me, starting in verse 5, it says the following. Mark 7, 5, And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, that is Jesus, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites. As it is written, the people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching his doctrines and commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your own tradition, it says. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, Whatever you would have gained from me is korban, that is, given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down and many such things you do. Here we see Jesus speaking directly to the Pharisees, but others, I'm sure, who are listening. And and Jesus has been teaching them about the fact that their traditions do not trump the teachings of God and tradition should never trump the teachings of God. And one way that they have been attempting to trump God's teachings is they found a loophole, or they technically created a loophole. And that is, they said, if you dedicate this stuff to God, whether it's money, whether it's things, whether it's time, whatever it might be, if you dedicate it to God and your parents are in need, then the child could simply tell their parents who are in need or who need help or whatever it might be, I'm sorry, I've dedicated it to God. I cannot help you. And Jesus says, how dare you allow a tradition to trump the command of God? And he refers back to Moses' teaching, which we'll see in a few moments, where it talks about those who are children are to honor their father and their mother. They were using God, if you will, and they were using the tradition of the Pharisees to escape their duty to honor their parents, to take care of their parents But Jesus illustrates over and over again, and Mark helps us see it, that it is a heart problem. In fact, right after this, we're not going to read it, but Jesus says right after this, in the next two verses, Jesus says, it's the heart that defiles a person. And the problem with the Pharisees and the problem with those who were using a loophole to get out of helping their parents was a heart problem. And church, as Christians, our hearts should be a heart that cares for our parents cares for those who cared for us. What does it mean to honor? When you hear the word or the phrase, honor your father and mother, it has several things that come to my mind. As you're growing, now if you're a child or a teen, and my two kids better be listening to this, it means obey them even when you don't want to. Right? Right? And that's the first thing that comes to my mind. And Scripture talks about children, obey your parents. Why, church? Yeah, for this is right, is what the Scripture says. So it says to obey our parents. And that's one way that we honor our parents, is by obeying them. We'll get into the reasons why we do this in a moment. But, but one way you do it is by obeying them, especially as we're growing up. Now, this doesn't mean 
that whenever we're fully grown, that if our parent says to do this, we have to do it because we're full grown adults. And by the way, children, an adult is someone who is over the age of 18 living on their own, paying their own bills. My grandparents would occasionally let some of us kind of come and live with them over the summer and stuff like that. And when we kind of buck the system, they said, hey, that's all well and good. You are of age. If you would like to move out and go get a job and pay your own bills, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> but you're in my house. <laughs> I have fun interactions with one of my children. Uh, it's the oldest. I won't say her name. But I have fun interactions because sometimes she'll say something like, you can't do that, that's mine, or this is my room. And I said, really? Did you buy the house that you're living in? Did you pay for this nice door that's on your bedroom? I think you ought to start obeying daddy <laughs> and mommy. So we listen and obey. That's what it means to honor. It's respectfulness, isn't it? It's respecting them. It's speaking well of them and toward them, helping them, loving on them. These are things that it means to honor. As we grow older, we continue to listen to them. We continue to visit with them. We continue to pick up the phone and call them. We continue to respect them and their thoughts, even if we disagree with them and their thoughts. Even after you leave the house, we are still called to honor our father and mother. What I find interesting is the concept of social security. Did you know that we wouldn't need social security if children would just honor and care for their parents? That's my opinion. Or we would need at least a lot less of it. Because there's a lot of, of this where children are, are not honoring parents. They're not helping parents. I, I tell my oldest all the time, she'll talk about, what, I want to do this when I grow up. I want to do that when I grow up. And I always tell her, honey, that's great. That's a really great thing to do on the side while you're a doctor taking care of mommy and daddy. We must honor our parents out of love, though. It's out of what's in the heart. It's not because thou thus saith the Lord. Now that's a good starting point, but we, we honor because of our heart. Honoring is not cursing your parents, Scripture says. Now what is cursing? Cursing and cussing are two different things, by the way. They can be the same depending upon the cuss. I'm not going to share how that works, but cursing is wishing evil upon someone wishing ill intent. If Exodus 21, verse 17 strongly warns against this, whoever curses or dishonors his father or mother shall be put to death. That's how serious God is about how we speak about our parents. Let's read that again, because I, I think we, we, we live in a time in which I think respect is not shown to anyone, for the most part, anymore, but especially children to their parents. Look, Let's read it one more time. Exodus 21, verse 17. Whoever curses or dishonors his father or his mother shall be put to death. Now, I'm not saying if you curse you, that you are to be put to death immediately, but this in the Old Testament was how serious God was about how we speak to our parents. Notice it doesn't say unless you feel they deserve it or unless they were a bad parent or unless they weren't there. Exodus 21.15 further warns against physically striking one's parents. Uh, this could be extended into a verbal strike. So what is honoring is not back-talking. It's not showing a lack of respect, regardless of age, by the way. It's not neglecting your parents as they age. This is easy for some. It's easier for some of us to honor our parents than others, let's be honest, right? Because we all came from different households. And honoring, I want to put this out there, honoring our parents does not mean we approve of things that went on in our childhood if they're obviously wrong. It means that whether they deserve it or not, we give them what God has asked us to give them. Now, we honor parents. We... we care for them, we, we look after them, we, we speak well of them to the best that we can, we 
We maybe check and call in to them whenever it's needed and necessary, but why do we do these things? Why do we honor and care for our fathers and our mothers? Why should we desire to do this? And it, and I believe, by the way, it can extend for those of us who still have grandparents alive. It can extend to our grandparents as well. But why do we do these things? Why should we desire the, this as Christians? I, there's three reasons, and there's more, but three I want to talk about. The first one is that God commands it. God tells us to do it. And again, you want to remember back that it is supposed to be from the heart, but sometimes our heart needs a jump start, realizing God asks us to do this. He commands it. Leviticus 19, verse 3 reads, Every one of you shall revere his mother and his father. It doesn't mean worship. What it means is everyone should respect, everyone should honor mother and father. And I believe this also extends to those who who raised you if you didn't have a mother and father, by the way. I, I preached a lesson like this a long time ago. I think it was at a different church, and someone came up, well, what about those of us who were raised in orphanages or raised in other ways by grandparents, whatever it might be? I think the, the idea here doesn't only mean a biological mother and father. I think what, he's, what God is getting at is those who put the effort into raising you. Honor them. He told every generation who follows him that they must honor and respect their parents. He has placed parents in our lives for a reason. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't be alive, one person said. Um, God expects it, is the second one. He commands it, and then he expects us to follow through on what he has commanded. It's one of those things in which whenever we look at honoring our parents, and, and there's tons of ways we can honor them, aren't there? There's ways we can do that. As you can, One of the things my brother does, I don't live near my parents, one of the things that my brother does is, uh, he, it's great, he will go and he'll mow their yard and he'll mow my grandmother's yard. And he'll do it for no charge whatsoever because he honors my parents and my grandma. My sister does things. I don't live there, so my sister does things because she lives there with my grandmother, and my grandmother tells me all the time some of the wonderful things my sister does to honor her and to care for her and for my parents. We do other things because we're at a distance. I I have a goal that someday I want to do for my parents uh, uh, that just takes time to accumulate, but one of the things I desire to do is pay one year rent for my parents so that they have one year rent free. Not because God said that's what I have to do, but because I believe that's a way to honor them. If you think about it, think of how much money was spent to raise each and every one of us, right? But there's great ways to honor. So God commands to honor, and you can get creative when you honor your parents. You can get creative in how you do it. right? Sometimes it's just giving a ride. That's another thing that my sister, my brother-in-law, and my brother get to do that I can't. is Whenever my grandmother or my mom have an appointment, especially out of town, because I came from a little bitty rinky-dink town, so a lot of times you're going to Fort Smith or you're going to um, Fayetteville or you're going to Little Rock for an appointment. And so my brother or my sister or my brother-in-law, they'll drive my parents or my grandma there. And that's something you can do if you don't have a lot of money to give, right? Or if maybe you don't have time to give every single week to um, mow their grass because you live too far away. Well, there are times when you can do other things to honor them, to make them feel loved. One of the things I do every single day with my grandmother is I call and check on her. She, she tells me all the time, she goes, I have two phone calls every morning. You and your uncle. (laughs) We call her every day just to check in on her. I call my parents just to check in on them and see how they're doing. You see, God wants us to honor them, and there's a lot of ways we can honor them. Now, Scripture speaks specifically here about financially honoring them and taking care of them. And that's definitely one way, but I want us to broaden our minds on what this means for us. It goes beyond the finances. 
Mark 7, verses 10 through 13. We read this a moment ago, but it says in verse 10, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But if you say, if a man tells his father or mother, who, whatever you would have gained from me is given to God, then you would no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God. See, God expects us to do what God taught us to do. He expects us to do what He has commanded us to do. And that's the other reason why we want to have a heart that honors father and mother. Because it's expected. The Pharisees and Jewish practices of not doing so was an act of rejecting God's will, according to Christ. In Luke 18, verse 20, a young ruler comes to Jesus and asks what he must do to inherit eternal life. And look look at this verse up here. I highlighted this for you. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. And look what he says. Keep in mind the question of the young man was, what do I have to do to enter eternal life? What is required of me to have eternal life. Look what it says right there in Scripture. Honor who, church? Your father and mother. And it's in every translation. Maybe not the message, but that's a paraphrase. It's in every translation of Scripture. Honor your father and mother. Do you think God expects us to honor our father and mother? It's not always easy, though, to do what God has expected. In fact, Jesus says, if you become a Christian, it's going to be a hard life of following my expectations, if not completely at some point. And that means sometimes it's not easy to honor our father and mother, but we're called to do it. Honoring our father and mother doesn't mean, again, that we, we obey every single command they give us as adults. And technically, if you're a teen or if you're a child and they give you a command that is not in line with Scripture, you serve God, but you do it in a respectful way, don't you? And make sure, by the way, don't take this and say, well, the preacher said I don't have to do a single thing you told me unless it's in you. That's not what I'm getting at. God just wants us to listen to love, to consider our parents as we grow old even. He wants us. He, he commands it. He expects it. But here's another great thing. He rewards it. God rewards it when we honor our father and mother. He rewards it when we take care of them, when we look in on them, whenever we help them out with a bill, whenever we do these things, when we take them from point A to point B. He rewards it. He notices that we're doing what He's asked us to do. Ephesians 6, verses 2 and 3 reads, Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. By the way, have you ever noticed it said that? This is the first commandment with a promise. And here's that promise. That it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. This is an Old Testament quote here. Honor your father and mother, and it came with a promise. That promise is, if you honor your parents, essentially God will honor you. He will take care of you. You see, I'm convinced that honoring our parents is of a top priority for Christians. I'm convinced that God doesn't just hope we'll do it, but God commands and expects us to do it, and He eagerly waits for us to do it. This, ex, this echoes, sorry, Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Now, when God makes promises like this, it doesn't mean that if you honor your father and mother, you're going to live to be 130 years old. That's not what he's getting at. What he's saying is, if you will honor your father and mother, you'll find that I, not me personally, but God will take care of you. God will give you longevity. God will sustain you. Paul has shown us two promises 
or a two-pronged promise, if you will. Paul explains that it could go well with you. He's stating that our life will be more enjoyable and pleasant if we honor our father and mother. And I believe that's true. It's not the health and wealth gospel, but it's the truth that if we honor our parents, there will be benefit to us from that. And secondly, Paul tells us that um, honoring our parents will allow us to live long in the land. If we honor our parents, we're more likely to live a longer, fuller life. Uh, This is shown in the Old Testament, actually. And while this may not be the case always, generally it's shown throughout Scripture. And one author made this point about it. He said, if you notice people who were taken out of life prematurely, and he's not talking about disease and sickness, he's talking about not good things. He said, if you're thinking of, if you think about it, most of them were not honoring their parents in doing whatever that thing was. And so I thought that was an interesting point the author made. But it is God's will that we honor our parents. It is God's will that we have a fulfilled life. In fact, Jesus said that's why he has come. And so everything God teaches us to do and Christ teaches us to do is for that purpose, so that we have a fulfillment of life, so that we live life to the fullest, it says in John 10.10. But part of that is honoring our parents, taking care of, watching over. Now, there are certainly times in which honoring and caring for a parent doesn't mean you just hand everything over, right? Just like taking care of siblings and friends, sometimes helping is hurting. It's not actually helping, isn't it? My youngest child seems to think that she cannot feed herself at four years old for one reason or another. I love her. I miss, to some degree, the days that I got to feed her. And when she said that the other night, I said, well, then you can sit there till you magically learn how to do it. It's just shoveling the food in your mouth, kid. It's not that hard. Why? Because it's not honoring her by treating her like a baby, is it? But you can extend that to there are times when helping our parents looks different than what the parent thinks it looks like. And sometimes it looks different than what we think it looks like, doesn't it? If you're a parent and you've ever had a child struggle with something, you know sometimes when you think you're giving grace and love and help, you're actually enabling that behavior. So to honor our parents looks different depending upon the situation. But the goal is, where is your heart, church? Is our heart in doing the right thing, in taking care of them, in looking after them, in in honoring them the way God asks us to honor them and that the way God honors us in our honoring of them. We are called to take care of them. We are called to honor them. We are called as teens to not be jerks towards our parents and parents to give grace. Doesn't Scripture say parents to... Uh, man, I had this on the tip of my tongue. But basically, it talks about don't overdo the discipline and stuff. Someone said it. Exasperate. Thank you. I probably said that wrong because I got my Arkansas accent coming out in that. But right, it tells parents to do the same thing. You don't overdo it with your kids. But even as adults, man, I I love watching adults. I love watching my parents take care of my grandma. I love watching people take care of their parents regardless of age. It is something wonderful about that. So taking care of and honoring parents is something that we should do from a heart of love of God. You see, the problem, going back to chapter 7 in Mark, the problem was not the tradition, it was the heart that was feeding the tradition and finding the loophole. The problem was they were using this as a way to get out of helping their parents for whatever reason. And Jesus said, the problem, yes, is the tradition loophole, but he said the real problem is the heart. And that's why the very next two verses he talks about what defiles somebody is what's in here. In church, we are called to honor our parents 
but we're called to do it from a heart that is right. We honor them because God commands it, expects it, and because God rewards it. And ultimately, the reward, as we saw with the young ruler, the reward ultimately is a home in heaven. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank you for this day. We thank you for the love that you give to us. Help us to be those who honor others, not just our parents, but our children who honors our coworkers, our employers, just everyone around us. Help us to encourage them, build them up, but help us to never forget our family. Thank you so much for your love, for your scripture. Help us to find creative ways to show honor and to take care of those who cared for us for many years. Help us to be forgiving when we have parents that we've struggled with that maybe just raised us in ways that are unthinkable. Help us to be forgiving. Father, help us to realize that your grace and your forgiveness can cover a multitude of sins. And in extending that, help us to learn ways that we can honor even, I hate to say it, but the worst of parents. Father, we love you, and we do it because of a love for you. Thank you for your son who ultimately honored you whenever he didn't want to go to the cross and said, it's not what I want, but what you want. We're so thankful for that sacrifice. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.